Hello lovely students and welcome back to English with Lucy. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can learn English with the news. I've chosen two articles to use in this lesson. The first is on the failure of self-checkouts, which is very relatable to me. And the second is about Welsh tidy mouse. No spoilers, but it might be the cutest story I've read in a very long time. This is a really advanced English lesson designed to supercharge your vocabulary. I'm going to read sections of the stories with you and I'll pick out some really useful vocabulary. I've also created a free PDF that goes with this video. In this PDF you can see all of the vocabulary that I teach in this video, plus lots more that I'm not going to have time to mention. There is also a quiz in the PDF that I know lots of you will love. If you want to download that PDF, just click on the link in the description box, you enter your name and your email address, then you'll sign up to my mailing list. After that, you'll receive my free weekly PDFs alongside my news, course updates and offers. It's a free service and you can unsubscribe at any time. Hopefully it will be useful for you if you want to improve your English. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that there are a lot of news websites out there, not to mention newspapers, magazines and so on. And the great thing is you can choose your news source depending on the type of articles you're interested in and the vocabulary you want to learn. If you work in finance, you might want to read The Economist. People who are interested in science might read articles from New Scientist. In the PDF, I have also included a list of recommended news sites based on the topics that you're interested in. News articles are usually jam-packed with useful vocabulary, collocations, phrases, and many are full of phrasal verbs and idioms too, especially if they include interviews with people. I'm going to start with the story about self-checkouts. This story is from the BBC and it's available for everyone to read. I'm going to leave a link to the story in the description box and in the PDF. I'm only going to go over the first few paragraphs in this lesson, so if you want to continue reading, check it out on the BBC website. So, self-checkouts. Love them or hate them? I personally love them until I hear unexpected item in bagging area, which I hear almost every time I use them. But let's see what the article from the BBC has to say. First, here's the headline. It hasn't delivered the spectacular failure of self-checkout technology. I want to draw your attention to the verb to deliver, to deliver in that headline. In this context, to deliver means to do or achieve something that was promised. For example, Alice has promised to increase sales and I'm sure she'll deliver. So the headline says that self-checkout technology has not done what was expected. Under the headline, we have what's called the lead, the lead, and we can spell it two different ways. L-E-D-E -E or L-E-A-D, but both are pronounced lead with the long E sound. This is the first sentence or paragraph of a news story that gives you an overview and is supposed to make you keep reading. Let's see if this lead delivers. <laughs> Unstaffed tills were supposed to revolutionize shopping. Now, both retailers and customers are bagging many self-checkout kiosks. Okay. I want to talk to you about a pun in that lead. Now, puns often use a word with two meanings in a funny way. News writers love puns, but they can often be difficult to understand for people who are learning a language. The pun in this lead involves the word bagging. In this context, to bag means to decide not to use something and to use something else instead. But of course, to bag also means to put something into a bag, which is something that you generally do at a self-checkout. For example, please bag your items carefully so they don't break. So are you following the story? Self-checkout technology has failed. It was supposed to completely change how we shop, but according to this story, shops and customers are deciding not to use it. I wonder why. Let's read on. Here's the next paragraph. It's a common sight at many retail stores. A queue of people waiting to use a self-checkout kiosk, doing their best to remain patient as a lone store worker attends to multiple malfunctioning machines. That's hard to say. The frustration mounts while a dozen darkened, roped off and cashierless tills sit in the background. 
wow, I have never identified with anything more. Standing in a queue, watching a poor store worker running from one checkout to another while the other tills are empty. Now the language in this paragraph from the news story is extremely expressive. Let's take a look at some of it in more detail. We have a lone store worker. When we talk about lone people or things, we mean that they are alone. It always comes before the noun, and in this case, it emphasizes that there is no one else around to help. A lone worker is a worker who is alone. Next, multiple malfunctioning machines. That's some great alliteration here, that quick repetition of the M sound. Alliteration is a literary device in which the same starting sound of words in a sentence or line is repeated close together. It's used a lot in advertising because our brains love these repeated sounds. Coca-Cola, Krispy Kreme. Multiple meaning many. Malfunctioning meaning not working correctly and machines, which I'm sure you know. To malfunction is a great high level verb to talk about machines not working properly. We also have the frustration mounts. This is a really good collocation, really high level. It means the frustration increases. To mount in this context means to gradually increase. Using to mount instead of to increase makes the sentence sing. You'll also often see the collocation written like this, mounting frustration. There was mounting frustration this morning as the delay continued. Use that in your writing and chef's kiss. Beautiful. All right, let's look at the last part of this article and remember to follow the link in the description box if you want to continue reading more. For shoppers, self-checkout was supposed to provide convenience and speed. Retailers hoped it would usher in the new age of cost savings. Their thinking, why pay six employees when you could pay one to oversee customers at self-service registers as they do their own labor of scanning and bagging for free. That's so true, isn't it? We're kind of working for free when we use self-checkouts. Let's look at one particular expression in that paragraph. Retailers hoped it would usher in a new age of cost savings. This is a great sentence for learning English. It actually makes me feel excited. First, we have the phrasal verb to usher in, to usher in to usher in. And phrasal verbs are usually less formal than similar single word verbs, but not this one. To usher in means to be at the start of something new or to cause something new to start. In the article, we saw that self-checkout was supposed to usher in a new age of cost savings. You'll often see to usher in followed by expressions like a new age, a period or a time. For example, the policy is ushered in a time of economic growth. So what do you think? Is self-checkout technology a good thing or a bad thing? I personally go back and forth. Sometimes I love it and I find it really convenient. Sometimes I find it really frustrating or I feel a sense of mounting frustration as we just learned. I would like to know how you feel in the comments. It's a really good writing practice opportunity. Okay, I hope that first article helped demonstrate how good a resource news articles can be when you're learning English. Now it's time to take a look at our second article. It's Welsh Tidy Mouse. Welsh Tidy Mouse. This article is from The Guardian newspaper. And again, I will put a link to it in the description box and in the PDF. It's free to read. This article is stuffed with phrasal verbs. I know phrasal verbs can be really tricky for learners of English, but seeing them used in context is one of the best ways to learn them and get an idea of how to use them naturally. There is a lot of other great vocabulary in this article too. Let's take a look at the headline. I warn you, this is so unbelievably cute. My mum sent it to me on my family WhatsApp group and I had to share it with you. Mouse secretly filmed tidying man's shed every night. Let me just say that again so you understand how cute it is. Mouse secretly filmed tidying man's shed every night. So a shed is a small building, usually in someone's garden, used for storing things like tools and bikes. And at night, a little mouse was going in and tidying up the shed. Underneath the headline, we can see this sentence. Photographer who noticed his items were mysteriously moving around, discovered an industrious rodent was organizing his workbench. I want to point out two words in this part. 
industrious. This means hardworking. He's very industrious. We also have rodent. Rodent, which is the name for the group of animals that includes mice, rats, and squirrels. I personally find the image of an industrious rodent so funny. Anyway, let's look at the next part of the article. A mouse has been filmed secretly tidying up a man's shed almost every night for two months. Wildlife photographer Rodney Holbrook noticed that objects he left out of place were being mysteriously put back where they belonged overnight. How convenient that the man who owns the shed is a wildlife photographer. So this man goes to bed with a messy shed and wakes up with a tidy one. Isn't that the dream? I want to talk about two phrasal verbs from that part of the article. The first is to tidy up, meaning to make something look neat and clean. And the particle up doesn't change the meaning of the verb to tidy. We could simply say a mouse has been filmed tidying a man's shed, but the preposition up adds a sort of shade of meaning and it implies that the tidying is complete. You tidy everything. The second phrasal verb is to put back. To put back, which means to return an object to where it was before it was moved. Another example, put those biscuits back on the shelf. We already have some at home. Let's look at the next part now. Holbrook from Bilth Wells in Powys, Wales, set up a night vision camera on his workbench to find out what was happening and captured footage reminiscent of the 2007 animated movie Ratatouille, where a rodent secretly cooks at a restaurant. Have you seen Ratatouille? This really does sound like a real life version of Ratatouille, doesn't it? There are two more excellent phrasal verbs in that passage. Can you find them? In this sentence, the first is to set up. To set up, meaning to prepare some equipment so it's ready to use. For example, I set up all of my video equipment before I start filming. The second one was to find out, to find out, which means to get information about something. For example, I want to find out who is tidying my shed. There are a few more words I want to talk about from that part of the article too. One is footage. Footage, and this has nothing to do with feet as far as I know. Oh my word, I just searched the etymology and it does have something to do with feet. It comes from early silent film. It's related to the fact that silent film was measured in feet and frames. So footage is a film that shows a particular event. We often say that we capture footage. For example, she used a drone to capture footage of the wildlife. The other is the word reminiscent, reminiscent. And this is followed by the preposition of. If something is reminiscent of something, it reminds you of something. And this is quite a formal word. We don't use it that often in everyday speech, but you do often see it in writing. I think it's beautiful. Now, let's look at the next part of the article. Holbrook, 75, told the BBC, it has been going on for months. I call him Welsh Tidy Mouse. <laughs> At first, I noticed that some food that I was putting out for the birds was ending up in some old shoes I was storing in the shed. So I set up a camera. Night vision footage showed the seemingly conscientious rodent gathering clothes pegs, corks, nuts and bolts and placing them in a tray on Holbrook's workbench. Let's look at two phrasal verbs from that part of the article. The first is to go on to go on. It's been going on for months. To go on means to continue over a period of time. We also have to end up, to end up, meaning to finally be in a place, often one that you didn't plan. And there is one phrase that I simply can't resist talking about, the seemingly conscientious rodent. Okay, cutest phrase ever. Seemingly means appearing to have a quality or to be something, though we're not sure. The quality is being conscientious, conscientious, meaning doing something carefully and with effort. It's a really tricky word to pronounce. Make sure you put the main stress on N, conscientious, conscientious. And you know the word rodent from earlier in the video. So we have a seemingly conscientious rodent 
seemingly because of course we can't ask the mouse if it likes to do things carefully but it certainly appears to. I think the writer had a lot of fun with this article and I hope you enjoyed reading it with me. Make sure you download the PDF that goes with this video. There is lots more information on there and there is a quiz so you can test your understanding of the new vocabulary. If this advanced video has made you want to learn more vocabulary, including collocations, phrasal verbs, maybe even advanced grammar, you might be interested in joining one of my beautiful British English programs. I offer B1, B2 and C1 beautiful British English programs that are full of really interesting reading and listening passages and real life conversation lessons to help you learn vocabulary and grammar in context as well as dedicated vocabulary and grammar lessons and pronunciation lessons to make sure that you speak English confidently and fluently. If you'd like to learn more, please visit englishwithlucy.com. I'd love to have you as one of my students. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.